Melon is sponsoring me to teach you how to use design themes, logos, and overlays in their live streaming app. It's so simple. You don't need all this gear like I have in my home studio to do a good live stream or recording. They have a browser-based solution that you can sign up for and you can get started all right here. Let me show you how you can customize those design elements. So up here in the top right-hand corner, there's the menu button. Click that. It's going to pull open these options over here. Click themes, logos, and overlays under the design section. You're going to see a number of options here. And what you can do is you can choose one of the existing themes to kind of play around with them if you choose. And you can click view all themes if you want to sort through all of the themes that are built into the platform. Go ahead, this is a great way to get started. This is a great way to take a look at what's out there and see maybe something that's closer to your aesthetic. And it's a great way to test out the software to go ahead and decide which one makes the most sense for you. Tons and tons of themes here that are free uh, with standard or pro or just straight up free. Some of these are paid, some of these are not. Got it? Once you have a theme that you kind of like that's closer to your brand, what I recommend doing is clicking edit current theme here, and then you'll be able to go into detail on all of the different elements of that theme. So here at the top, this thing called style, that's going to determine the style of how text is displayed. So when I click casual, notice how the AWOL digital thing over there, rounded, and boxy, it changes the way the text is displayed. That's gonna change the way text is displayed in all elements of how text is displayed in Melon, got it? You can also add custom branded colors. I've added my own hex codes here for my brand, but you can choose any color you want. They have a color slide wheel here you can choose, and you can choose the specific colors of your brand, primary and secondary, and that's going to affect the branded elements, the text boxes and pop-ups and overlays and comments and tickers and things that pop up here in Melon. They're gonna be your branded colors if you program those colors in here properly. Then, when you get to the font section, you're gonna to wanna to choose a font. It's from a limited list of fonts. Choose the font that is the closest to your branded font from this pretty extensive list that's here, all right? When you choose that, that will be your style for your font, for your brand, and then you can choose what color the text shows up as with those fonts right here, which is great. Uh, so that's really, really important that you choose the coloring there as well. Also, for customization, there is a background option. So as you can see back here, I've got this kind of, uh, I'll uh, remove my uh, video there. This is a custom image background that I've implemented, but you can implement any number of backgrounds that come with the software or come with Melon. And there's a huge giant list of default ones that are here. I highly recommend sorting through these and finding something incredibly simple not something with text, not something with a bunch of stuff on it, but something incredibly simple to put behind you. You don't want the background to be distracting. You can also choose a single color if you'd like from the color palette. You can't go wrong with black and you can't go wrong with white, okay? So those are two options that will always be classy and will always be in style. The last element I want to show you, oh, and by the way, you can upload a custom background if you want as well here. So the custom background, just keep in mind, whatever you upload needs to be a 16 by 9 format. That's widescreen format. And then you click open and it will bring the file in. As you can see, it's uploading the file right up here. And then once the file comes in, you literally just click it and it goes live here. And then that is your background now uh, whenever you are doing your broadcast. Got it? Cool, and if you ever wanna delete any of these elements you've uploaded, by the way, you just literally click the button and it'll pull up a pop-up menu and it will delete those elements and they're no longer in your cloud library. Here under the overlay section, it's right behind me, right down here, there's an overlay section and you can choose any number of overlays that pop up over the screen. There are some default ones, as you can see, I'm kind of playing around with that pop up over the screen to kind of give it you know, kind of frame things up and kind of make it look your brand if you choose to use these. I would say if you do choose to use them, use them sparingly. I would say that they um, can be distracting. Uh, I've uploaded a custom one. So just like anything else, you can upload a custom transparent PNG or transparent JPEG is what you're going to need to upload here in order to make this look good. So if you can do a transparent PNG or a transparent JPEG, and here's an example one that I just implemented. See this border here? It's just a transparent border that I've implemented around my broadcast. If you wanna add that 
that custom element here, see this blue thing around the edge of my broadcast, that can add a custom branded element to your show. Just use something simple and use this sparingly, in my opinion. Uh, if you put something on there that's too large uh, or is too distracting, I, I would say even these clouds are too big and distracting, it could take away from your content. You want the content and what you're communicating to be on the forefront and not to be distracted by some graphics you're adding. The graphics should enhance the content, not distract from the content. That's how you add custom design elements, including your branding, your background, your overlays, you name it, logos even. Did you know you can add logos? So let me show you how you can add the logo here in the design section. That's the last element that you need to know about. So check it out. Down here in the bottom right-hand corner, if you back out to the main menu, that was all in the editing theme section. Down here in the main menu, look, there's a logo section. By default, it's gonna have the Powered by Melon animation -y logo here. You can move this element around the screen and resize it as you see fit. So it doesn't have to be in the same spot. You can choose how you wanna use it. If you don't want the Melon logo on top of your broadcast, get rid of it. And you can upload your own image by clicking this up to 10 megabytes. You want a transparent PNG. I've got one of my other brands, AWOL. I have these uh, crypto brands. I teach people how to use different crypto platforms. I'm just gonna bring these logos in. This is a transparent PNG and it overlays on top of the broadcast. I can then resize it. I can then move it around and move it to whatever corner I want. I personally recommend if you're gonna add a logo to your broadcast or to your uh, recording, put it in the bottom left-hand corner. It's usually the best spot. As you can see on my videos, I have my AWA wall digital logo animation down there. Why? Because in that spot, there's not gonna be clickable elements like on YouTube, for example, and on Facebook, for example. You've got things like cards and pop-ups that come up in that corner, and you don't want your logo to get in the way of where people are trying to click to get to whatever you're trying to promote. Got it? That's how you add custom logos. So as you can see, with all of those elements, you can make your broadcast very customizable. Your own colors, your own fonts, your own logos, your own overlays, the whole nine, all in a browser-based solution. So if you want to sign up, check out the link below to check out Melon. I like it. I recommend it. Adios, amigos.